So I recently checked out this uh, fab lab in Shanghai called the Unilab, or Nunilab, N-E-U-N-I lab. Now, it's uh, really cool, and they got this unique uh, element called the Material Materials Library. It's um, materials like a brand from uh, Paris, France, I think, and they set up these materials libraries all over. I think they got several throughout the world for, um, you know, makers and uh, product designers to come and check out new materials. Really cool. So anyways, I ended up getting talking with the people there at the lab, and we started looking for some projects to do together. We were going to try to make a product. Um, they pitched around some stuff, I pitched around some stuff, nothing really stuck, and then uh, I went back home and I brainstormed for a while. And I came up with a way that I think I could apply pretty much any design, including, including theirs, to uh, a new invention that would allow it to have some kind of uniqueness and uh, interaction and uh, um, just uh, a, a great li little bi business, mo business model for a, a Kickstarter product or something. So anyways, um, what it is, is it's, it's very simple here. Um, it's just an axis with the two points. Basically, if you, if you take a, a device, whatever you're trying to power, whether it be your nano or lights or a speaker, Bluetooth speaker or whatever, um, instead of connecting it with a plug with two, why not just connect it like top to bottom and have a free, free degree of rotation? Now, these pinpoint connections here were a bit of a problem. So there's, there's problem number one. The power was not very stable. For running just lights, like raw LEDs or whatever, it wasn't that bad, actually. You could, uh, you'd hardly notice the flicker. It was largely out of your um, uh, persistence of vision, depending on, on the connection. But uh, most of the time, I could get these plugged into just like aluminum heat sinks like this, into little, little holes in aluminum heat sinks, and then spin it around, and it would, would work great. So... Um, Problem was for a nano or like an Arduino or anything, uh, you know, anything that requires stable power, it would often reboot. Um, if you sat it there and left it alone, it would be fine. But if you spun it, it might reboot when you spin it, but as it's spinning, it was usually okay. There was a little interruption in the power occasionally just from the spinning itself. Uh, but, you know, bumping it or touching it was, it was a bit touchy. So that was, uh, that was the first issue to deal with, and I tried several things. Honestly, I did not visit copper contacts for the bases here as much as I should have, but that's because I ended up finding something that worked so great that I just ended up skipping over copper. Because I, I saw these at the market, and I was just like, you know what? Those graphite motor brushes, those are designed to conduct electricity across, uh, you know, fast-moving, uh, uncontro not uncontrolled, but a much more chaotic kind of contact area. Um, so I imagine these are, and they're also designed to handle relatively large amounts of current. So I imagine these might actually do the trick. So, and I did some tests and the prototype in the, the video you'll see, that's, this is exactly what it's using. All we do is you embed this into the, the device or the, the body or the frame or whatever. You can cover it up completely and then just drill down to it. Drill down to it and make a nice little rounded hole in there and into the, into the graphite just a bit and then the contact will just kind of sink right in and make beautiful electrical connection. Like um, the, the one there that's interactive has just a nano and uh, a gyroscope inside of it. That's all that's inside that. Um, and you can kind of see them hanging in the middle there. And they're, they're being powered by connectors like this. Now the difference is the connectors are rounded, of course, first, because the graphite's it's a little like pencil lead, you know, it, it might uh, crack up a bit, especially under some high pressure from a, a sharp point. But with nice rounded points, it seemed to be doing okay. I mean, there's a fair amount of friction as it spins, but um, the concept is a rack that would be mounted in your house. And then, so for example, with the uh, gyroscope one, it's simply you can change the color whenever you want just by, you know, grabbing it. There's no central command, there's no app, it's, it's just a fully self-contained, very cheap little unit. That's the whole fun here. It's building a line of products that you could mount in these racks. So you mount the rack above your couch, above your computer, wherever in your house, and then it can be decorative. Uh, you can even then take out the decorative part, put in a functional part. Maybe one is a Bluetooth speaker embedded in some kind of shape or, you know, basically instead of having your device have a cable that runs out, your device is designed to mount right in here. And you just go nuts with all the 5 volt stuff. You know, you could literally walk into a market and just look through all those USB devices and be like, I can make one out of that, I can make one out of that, I can make one out of that. So, I mean, it just, it seemed like a model that would just go forever. Um, Next, uh, so anyways, we covered the points. They should be rounded. The graphite connections are great, but I have not explored copper as well as I should have. And if you're looking to solve the power problem and you want to use, you don't want to use graphite because honestly, there is an issue of lifespan. Eventually, if you spin something enough, eventually it will spin through this. I mean, technically that'll happen to anything, but um, depending on the thickness of this, it might not last long enough. You can always make it thicker to increase the lifespan of it, but perhaps you're looking for something that can be spun 
you know, 500 million rotations or something before it has to be replaced. But that's going to be an issue. So um, maybe there's some more to look at copper or other metals there. But uh, the idea here is that it's cheap and easy. Pretty, I want it, I want it to be as easy for, to make and manufacture and, and uh, maintain as possible. So the idea would be actually in the end, you'd take these, you'd embed them in some little kind of capsule that you 3D print or something, and they can be replaced. This, this kind of, the, the connectors can be replaced. And actually in the final design, my opinion would be this would be on the stick, and the frame would have the points. And maybe you could move the points around on the frame or something like that. Like there's just one big electrical connector through the frame and you can insert the points through into, into various cavities and then just move the, the rotation and axis points around wherever you like. But um, uh, yeah, and if you put these in the device, then they only have to last as long as the device. If you put them in the frame, then you gotta remember this has to last as long as the frame unless you're gonna make it replaceable. But uh, for DIY stuff, awesome. For small Kickstarter projects, you can probably get some stuff really rolling with this. Just be aware of the stress test your, your, your graphite and see how long it's going to last. Maybe hook up a motor and just set it spinning and see how many days it'll spin before it's spun right through the graphite. Um, and so that's that. Um, next, you can always just go the alternate route. You can say, you know what? Screw it. I'll take the unstable power and I'll just put in a lithium ion battery. And the little the device will will run off the battery and the uns, I'll use the unstable power to power the battery and or you could come at it from the even more complicated electrical engineering standpoint and go you know what I'm going to use a series of capacitors maybe a super capacitor a farad capacitor whatever and I'm going to you know do it electrically with capacitance and maybe inductance or you know now that's that's a bit um, a bit much because actually the 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 power the blackouts or whatever that happen, I guess you could call them on here, they're, they're longer than I think. Well, I mean, a supercapacitor, depending on what, what kind of uh, uh, device you're running. I mean, if you're running a whole bunch of lights, you might not last as long. If you're running, like, just a nano in there for some reason, then maybe it'll last quite a while on, on just a, a decent capacitor. So um, there's several ways to come at that problem. I decided to go the connector route. I wanted to see how, how reliable I could make these. Could I remove any need for excess stuff in here? And actually... These are so, so cheap that this is the way to go. Next, for the connectors, these are called probes, okay? Now, these, um, they're obviously designed for, you know, taking electrical tests uh, um, from circuits or wherever, you know, you want to pinpoint. And the, the reason they have a spring is so that they can apply a nice, nice even amount of pressure and not skip around and not have your hand, the vibrations kind of um, uh, uh, break the connectivity at points. Um, so these, were, these are very nice. I really like these designs. But unfortunately, they both use spring compression, which I don't know if it's just because I'm not a mechanical engineer, but these ones here that use the reverse, they, they stretch the spring and the compression is, the, the, the desire for the spring to compress is what shoots the pin out. These have a lot more kick to them. These are a little weak and I kind of, I would love to maybe double the the tension inside of them and then I'd consider using them just because they're so beautiful but they've got another problem they're long if your device is meant to be kind of emitting light like that panel or you want it to be transparent or you want to make a sharp turn and have empty space there uh, you got you got a problem it's, these these are way too long but there's no reason that using a smaller spring and a design like this you couldn't get the same amount of tension strength into a very small space maybe even use really small neodymium magnets those tiny super cheap ones and just have them repelling each other inside of a small cavity or something to push this this contact out but uh i mean this is almost all excess this is excess this guide can even be shortened to some degree uh the spring is too long there's more excess up here so this really could be way shorter could, uh, the idea would be that it, it could be as flat as humanly possible um, I was thinking to make to, to make my own um, just out of some springs, and then maybe three D print or ma or just hand make a little a little connector that's going to pull the springs apart. Obviously, much smaller. I'd need much smaller, stronger springs than this, um, and then uh, just use rods of copper and just chop the copper round the tip of the copper and mount it. So, anyways, uh, just to recap, rounded edges, graphite. You might want to look into metals for longer lifetime on these contacts. Remember, you got to consider which ones would be the more disposable, replaceable. Obviously, the, the components you mount would be. Um, and then you're probably going to want the contacts, the, 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 the points or the, the pins on the frame, not on the device itself. Because suppose it was a ball. I, I'd love to have a ball I could mount in here, but I wouldn't want it to have two needles pointing out of the edges when I throw it at someone. So um, 
the, the idea would be that the contacts on the object that's mounted are flat and the points are inside of the frame and perhaps the points are just little little capsules that you can move around and then obviously one will be a la one will have the spring and the other will not that's how you mount it you you stick it in you push it down you put it in and it locks into place very simple um, so you'll embed this drill a hole through it uh, I think I've covered just about anything I don't want to start repeating myself and I don't want to edit this video next um, we've got the devices you can put in there. You can put pretty much anything. I would recommend a 5 volt frame, but there's no reason to, that you couldn't look at it at a 12 volt frame. Regardless which you choose, inside the device you can step it up and down. Put a bridge rectifier in the device, and it doesn't matter if you put it in upside down or right side up. No difference. The, it, it, just beautiful. Um, gyroscope interaction is an awesome way to interact because it's so reliable and smooth and, uh, and detailed, it's got a high resolution on it usually, and so cheap. Um, I mean, it's just, there's, there's just so many roads to take with this, and I think this is an awesome project. Now, the reason I'm, I'm sharing all the, these little technical tricks I came up with is because we decided we were going to look into it, uh, then we decided to go forward with it, we built it all, prototype, I, we're ready, I am ready for, like, in-house production and everything, and the project just got cancelled, and I was never really given an answer why. So, I, I mean, there's nothing I can do. Uh, so, technically, the IP was never sold. Uh, it's not like I have any... In, th there's no reason that I can't share this, my stuff, online. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you about their specific uh, contributions to the design. Um, those things are theirs. But uh, this was mine, the concept of, of this rack that has little spring-based connectors and, a ro and rotates. After that, you can do all sorts of stuff. I mean, I'm really baffled as to why this didn't go through. It's so, so cheap and so, so fun. Um, it can be made, you know, all the way up to, like, mass scale. I think if you went at a right start, just selling, like, little little single units or small frames and work your way up. Um, anyways, uh, and yeah, um, one of, like, we even pitched around ideas over there. It would be a great way to display materials, you know, like you can... You do those panel lights like we built and then just stretch materials over them or stretch anything over them uh, mount products or just even turn them into like have a cavity inside of it where you can just put an object for display and then rotate them around I mean I, I could keep going on for hours but I don't have to I, you, you guys can all imagine a bunch of ways that this could be applied I, I, I'll bet the key here is uh, people have had rotating connectors for a long time but the fact that we got all these 5 volt products and that this is, is what makes this kind of a, a great idea now. You don't have to worry about this being high voltage and me touching both sides so much. You can, it, it's just a beautiful way to have all of your 5 volt devices turn into kind of like a product line akin to light bulbs. And if you're making the light bulbs, I think that would be a very good business model. You can basically run around, take every device out there on the market, embed it into a custom, you know, 3D printed or designed whatever case, add your connectors, and now it's one of your products. Now it's part of the product line and completely interchangeable, replaceable, arrangeable by the user. Um, it's half art and design, half interior design, half, um, you know, uh, organizational. You're getting stuff up off your desk space and up onto your wall. You're using the wall as a place to charge and mount stuff. It's just so elegant, I think. I, I would hate to see this idea fall by the wayside. So... Uh, free for all. I, I mean, I'd love to see if anybody applies it. I think it could be so beautiful. The frame could be a piece of art. You could, you could build a frame, mount a TV in it, and then have these bulbs around it because we're already mounting TVs on the wall. Um, I, I'll shut up. You, you let your imagination run wild. If you do something, I would love to see it. If you've seen something similar, I looked around, I couldn't find anything. Please let me know. Um, and uh, if you have any comments about the technology or suggestions, I would love to hear them. Uh, I'm not moving on it right now, so that's why I'm sharing it with, uh, with everyone. I, I think this, at the very least, is an awesome, fun amateur project. It's not difficult. It is so easy. So, I don't see why it hasn't been done. Hopefully, you guys might like to do it. I might do it again someday. Uh, keep hacking.